Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm a postdoc at uh, Center for Applied Energy Research. Uh, today, I'm going to make a presentation on catalytic conversion of carbon dioxide to formic acid high value chemical. The amount of carbon dioxide in air is increasing day by day. So basically, anthrop anthropogenic that activities uh, are responsible for it, uh, like uh, uh, combustion of uh, coal, combustion of coal, natural gas, and the petroleum products are emitting carbon dioxide to air. So looking at uh, the data of 2020, so we see the amount of carbon dioxide in air is uh, has already surpassed 410 ppm, which is uh, about more than 500 times larger than uh, other greenhouse gases like methane and nitrous oxide. So we can say carbon dioxide gas is making a significant contribution for greenhouse effect. Uh, <clears throat> naturally, or our and artificially carbon dioxide is captured and it is converted to different products. It is a starting material for uh, uh, the synthesis of different types of uh, chemicals uh, like uh, methanol, urea, carbon monoxide, methane, and so on. And we are targeting to produce uh, formic acid. So now the question is uh, why formic acid? So looking at this uh, plot, uh, gives free energy for different molecules. So we can see this uh, formic acid is uh, very close to carbon dioxide. So it needs uh, the lowest gives energy input uh, for conversion of CO2 to formic acid. Uh, also that uh, it can be converted to this uh, using very cheap materials, uh, easy water, and just what we need is uh, suitable catalyst. So looking at the current market of formic acid, less than one megaton of formic acid is uh, consumed because that, you know, it is very expensive. The production of formic acid involves a multi-step processes uh, that we call chimera processes. process uh, here. Uh, if we are able to produce formic acid from carbon dioxide and water and using suitable catalyst, uh, it will open two new uh, areas for the application of uh, formic acid, uh, basically, uh, formic acid-based fuel cells, and it will be a very good medium for liquid hydrogen storage. So this is uh, how uh, carbon dioxide gets converted to formic acid. The first step is uh, the adsorption of carbon dioxide to the substrate uh, with electrons. Uh, it is a linear molecule, fairly stable. Uh, this is a rate determining step, means the overall process uh, depends on this. So if a CO2 molecule is weakly bonded to the substrate uh, and uh, with that protonation and uh, interaction with the electrons, uh, there is possibility of getting formic acid or formate ion if the pH is more than 3.75. If it is strongly bonded to the substrate and uh, there is possibility of getting carbon monoxide from which uh, other C1 and the C2 products uh, can be obtained. However, the actual performance of that a catalyst depends on the catalyst itself, pH, and also on the reduction potential. So this is our process for converting carbon dioxide to uh, formic acid. So this is a reactor where pressurized carbon dioxide will be converted to formic acid and uh, the products will be purified and used for further purpose there. So here, uh, for this, we need a first substrate, suitable substrates, so that we can load catalyst heavily. And uh, we need uh, different types of catalyst uh, and that, uh, immobil immobilizing the catalyst on the substrate and uh, doing that uh, catalytic uh, evaluations. So we have used here commercial carbon cloth and uh, carbon zero gel was coated to carbon cloth by the polymerization of the resorcinol and formaldehyde and we used uh, very cheap metals, copper and tin for making catalyst, nano copper, copper oxide, tin, tin oxide, and copper tin that uh, nano composites uh, uh, were uh, synthesized by using hydrothermal process. And the products were that uh, 
immobilized by using the ionochromatography. So these pictures show the morphology of uh, our electrode. This is commercially available carbon cloth. When it is coated with the CX, uh, it, is, it becomes uh, highly porous. Compared to carbon cloth, this is CX, carbon zero gel is uh, highly porous and it can hold very large amount of uh, catalyst. We are getting catalyst loading and a far larger than what is reported in the literature. So these three are catalyst coated electrodes. In this picture, we can clearly see the nanoparticles of the catalyst. Actually, these are copper discs, nano copper copper oxide discs. Uh, this is our lab scale that uh, reactor. So this our electrochemical cell has uh, two compartments. This is cathodic compartment. This is anodic compartment where there is counter electrode. This is our working electrode. That electrode coated with the catalyst and where CO2 reduction uh, takes place. This is our reference electrode, silver, silver chloride. And the carbon dioxide is purged into one molar potassium bicarbonate solution to get a pH of 7.6. And then this is, uh, yeah, we have got a data logger for measuring that uh, cell potential during uh, the reduction process. Uh, here, uh, this is uh, the actual cathodic reaction for carbon dioxide gets reduced to formic acid and uh, water is oxidized to oxygen at anode and uh, this is uh, overall reaction. For the evaluation of catalytic performance and uh, uh, the working electrode was uh, uh, reduced, it was applied, uh, negative potential was applied and that the uh, liquid samples were collected after a certain time. The performance was uh, compared using this uh, uh, term, which is that uh, Faraday efficiency. Uh, it is uh, simply the percentage of uh, charge that is actually used to convert uh, uh, carbon dioxide to formic acid. So higher that uh, uh, Faraday efficiency means uh, that a uh, better performance. So here is the result from that copper copper oxide nanodes. This is a Faraday efficiency for formate ion and uh, is a function of uh, reduction potential negative 1.3 to 1.4. This is corresponding current density. These are copper copper oxide nanodes. So we are using this catalyst. We got a Faraday efficiency of 28% uh, in 14 hour. And uh, this is, uh, it produces uh, formic acid in a very narrow potential range about that of negative uh, 1.55. Uh, literature also revealed that uh, this catalyst is uh, very selective for carbon monoxide, but however, it does produce formic acid to some amount. So then we synthesized and tested tin, tin oxide uh, nanoparticles here. Uh, this figure shows that the morphology of the electrode, and this is a uh, Faraday efficiency as a function of electrode potential. So here we got a peak Faraday efficiency at negative 1.45, which is 100 millivolt less than that copper one. And we got this Faraday efficiency of 58% in 14 hour, but there was a, this was using uh, this napion, which is a cation exchange of, uh, a membrane that separates cathode and anode. Uh, we got some issues with that, and we replaced that with that uh, uh, this, uh, bipolar membrane puma sep and with that we got a 67 percent in 15 hour that is very good it is in the lab scale so further that uh, we synthesize that the copper tin oxide that uh, nano composites uh, these are the pictures uh, when we introduce copper into tin the pipe size of the nanoparticles is uh, further reduced we got that uh, comparable to 100 nanometer particles using this uh, uh, copper tin and uh, these were used at different potential. And uh, we got uh, very good formic acid formation at even lower negative potential that is 1.40 with uh, close to 70% Faraday efficiency in 12 hour. So here uh, uh, I have uh, given the, compare the results over here. So while going from this copper to tin oxide composite, we see that uh, the cell potential is uh, uh, very low. It means a uh, lower cell potential means uh, we apply less energy, means we are getting more product, means it is uh, energy efficient, Faraday efficiency is also good, and uh, here uh, reduction potential 
going from this uh, negative 1.40 means we are getting fermigacity at uh, lower uh, reduction potential. This is uh, the reason for selecting that uh, the bimetallic catalyst. Uh, this process is still going on. We are making catalyst and uh, testing there uh, in the lab scale and ultimately they will be uh, used for large scale uh, applications. Uh, this is the summary from my talk. Copper copper oxide is selective for uh, formic acid at negative 1.55. And with the tin oxide, we got a negative 1.45. And uh, this uh, bipolar membrane is uh, more stable. And uh, what we have, uh, we are having some problem. There is uh, some, there are some pro issues related to mass transfer in anode section as well as in the cathode sections. We are working on that part and we will be pressurizing carbon dioxide gas and to get a, a better performance of formic acid and ultimately these results will be uh, applied in the large scale. Uh, this is uh, uh, my research group. Thanks to DOE for funding this research and all of my teammates. Thank you.